Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Monday morning edition of Mid Morning Manna, coming to you Monday through Friday from North Harrison Baptist Church, 10 a.m. each morning. It'll be a blessing to you, and I, I believe it will be. I hope that it will be, not because of anything that I personally have to offer, but because we're looking at the Word of God. The Word of God is always profitable and helpful. This past week, we talked about Christians need a merry heart, and this week, I want to talk to you about how to have a merry heart. Boy, that is so important. It's one thing to know that we need it, but what, how does the Bible say that we can have that merry heart? Rejoicing in the Lord because of the circumstances, rejoicing in the Lord in spite of the circumstances, and thanking him for what he's done for us. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. So on your darkest day, on the tough day, you ought to just be able to say, well, uh, I, I'm, I don't understand what's happening right now, but I praise the Lord. I'm just gonna praise the Lord. I'm gonna rejoice in the Lord and I'm thankful for his goodness. I know that I'm, that I'm heaven bound with the hammer down. I'm, I'm going to heaven when I die. And I know that that's the ultimate destination for my life. And I hope for others that I can influence and for my family, my friends, that sort of thing. So how to have a merry heart. I, I concluded last week with talking about by giving your heart to Jesus how important that is. Let me just read that passage again to you in case you missed that. In Romans chapter 10, verses nine and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it's not a matter of just believing uh, intellectually, oh yeah, I believe in God, I believe in Jesus, yeah, I believe he rose, uh, that kind of thing. It's not just intellectual belief, but it's making that personal application to your life where you personally say, not only do I believe, I need him, and I am guilty, and I don't deserve heaven, but I believe that what Jesus did paid my way to heaven if I'm willing to put my trust in him and ask him to apply that payment that he made to my account as well. And uh, he will do it if you'll by faith trust him, believe him, receive him. So how to have a merry heart? Number one, make sure you're saved. Make sure you've trusted Christ as your savior. And then I gave a second point uh, on Friday of last week, and that is to make sure you keep a clean heart. Keep short accounts with God, stay, stay prayed up. And uh, when you realize, the moment you realize, don't say, oh boy, tomorrow I'm gonna try to do that different. No, the moment you realize you've crossed the line, that you've blown it, that you've, that you've made a mistake, that you've sinned, uh, then right there, stop and say, dear God, help me to, to number one, confess my sin. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, what a great God we have and how, how helpful he is and how much he wants us to receive him, believe him, and be with him one day in heaven. And keeping short accounts is one of the ways as a Christian, once you have received him, to have a merry heart and a joyful countenance and be a, and be a testimony for him is by keeping those short accounts. Get rid of that sin, confess it as sin. If there's others around you that heard you, you said something you shouldn't have said or you, you, you did something you shouldn't have done, immediately just let them know, I am so sorry for that. I've prayed and asked God to forgive me and I want you to forgive me too because I need to be a better testimony to you. I, be, I need to be a better influence to others around me. And uh, just ask God to help you swallow that old pride that we have and be willing to walk with him and talk with him and have that fellowship with God. And God, I believe, will give you a heart that rejoices and praises the Lord. That doesn't mean as a Christian, you're never gonna go through a tough time. Doesn't mean you're never gonna lose a loved one. Doesn't mean you're never gonna face sickness in your own life. Uh, doesn't mean that, that uh, you're not gonna become the victim of someone else's hatred and malice and that kind of thing. All those things that, you know, again, I said I say this often, it rains on the just and the unjust because God said it in the, in the Bible. And yes, it does. We all go through things, but God wants you to come out on the other side every time with a merry heart, rejoicing in him, telling others. So we're gonna talk about how to have a merry heart. I'm gonna give you a few more thoughts
thoughts that you can apply to your life through the rest of this week. And I believe they will help you to have a heart of victory, a merry heart, a heart where you're not under the, the burden of worry and, and discouragement all the time. God can, God can bring you out of that. Will you allow him to do it? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity we have to, on a daily basis and on a continual basis to live on the victory side, to have a merry heart, to have the joy of the Lord in our heart, uh, to know that you love us, and to know that you are right there to help us, to bless us, and to encourage us. Father, help us to just have that merry heart. Help us to be contagious. Whatever we have, Lord, we know it is contagious to others around us. And Lord, uh, everybody's so worried about viruses. Help us, Lord, to be concerned about what we are being contagious with in this matter of spiritual things. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. This is hard.